What's up everyone? So the 2022 eBay Open kicked off this week and today's session was by far the best one. It was trading cards with Bob Means, so let's get right into it. In or trading cards, you see kids getting involved at an early age, playing the games or hunting after their heroes and all the way up to people who are still collecting and they've been collecting since they were kids. So the... Um, this, the velocity that eBay can can create is important to talk about as well. And one of the reasons why we can generate the kind of sales that we do for you is you look at how many cards are put on the uh, eBay at any one given time. So three cards per second. In Q1 Six of million Pokemon That's cards in 2021. Inside. And the That's number insane. one reason that people shop eBay is because of that breadth of inventory. You can find what you're looking for. And with trading cards, you can find it in the condition that you want. And you can find a graded version or an ungraded version. You can find, if you're into collectible card games, a near mint version or a heavily played version. eBay offers it all, and it's one thing that sets us apart. I also think the number six million plus Pokemon cards sold in 2021, it's just staggering to imagine that. That is a very popular title, Insane. obviously, on eBay. And that gives you an idea of how many cards are moving through uh, the eBay platform. Anyways, year over year growth in 2021 was phenomenal. We see no reason that we can't keep growing this business and helping you be a part of it. So I want to share some facts with you here. Um, these are some top growth categories. By the way, the Bob Means Fit is absolutely fire. Here is you don't see that shirt. Sports, the big three. We're going to talk about that in a second. What you see is smaller sports taking off. And this speaks to the health of the business. This speaks to the fact that people are now looking awesome. past we the big Fortnite. three, baseball, football, and basketball. We'll get to that again in Weiss. a moment. And Marvel. they're looking for new sports. Um, soccer, for instance, tremendous growth. Boxing, MMA, wrestling. We've seen growth in all of these categories, and it's always focused on the best in those categories. And it's an important thing to remember. Tennis, for instance, one of the biggest cards we've seen in the last couple of years is Serena Williams. And she is arguably the best tennis player of all time. And you see that cultural moment translate into the marketplace. On the gaming side and uh, non-sports trading card side, you see the smaller games. So the big three, we often talk about Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, and uh, Pokemon, of course. But now you're seeing the growth come from these new uh, games that are coming out, being released, Digimon and Weiss Schwartz and Flesh and Blood. And you're also seeing from a uh, non-sports trading card perspective, you're seeing cultural relevancy in what is popular. So Fortnite, it's a game, it blew Fortnite, up. Fortnite, let's go. Yes, Bob Kids means. Kids looking for their Fortnite characters on these non-sports trading cards. Same Kids? thing with Marvel. Marvel's everywhere. 30, Movies, but okay. Television, it's fine. Tremendous amount of things being released to the, to the public. And Digimon's that's driving number one. interest in the Marvel non-sports trading cards. So again, I'm going to allude to this a couple times. When something happens in real time, when something uh, amazing from a sporting perspective occurs, or a game becomes the center of the cultural zeitgeist of the moment, it will be translated on eBay. And you always, as a seller, always need to be prepared for those moments. Heck yeah. Moving on here. So now we're going to talk about the big three, though. And you see how big the big three are. Uh, sports trading cards are heavily dominated by basketball, baseball, and football. They follow their own seasonality. So uh, during basketball season, that's when basketball is going to peak. And of course, from an individual player perspective, you see these huge peaks for the players that make the playoffs. And when they do spectacular things in the playoffs, you see that get translated into the velocity and the price actualization of those players. So if Steph Curry hits 60 points in a playoff game, Steph Curry cards are going to pop. Same thing for baseball and football. Again, the seasonality is super critical right now. People are getting very excited about the forthcoming football season. So it's about to hit. We're about to get fully into the football season. And everyone's looking for those rookies who are going to emerge. They're looking for the cards that are associated with them. But then, of course, you know, Tom Brady. Can't go wrong with Tom Brady. And baseball, same thing. Middle of the summer. Wait until the season ends. We're going to start seeing some playoff activity any moment now. Um, and that will drive interest in some of the individual players. And then baseball will slow down a little bit until we get to spring training and, and we start hearing speculative news on who the guys are that are hitting the ball well, pitching well, throwing well. Sometimes big moves from small market teams to big market teams will drive a lot of interest in the player as well. Um, you know, we're all waiting to see what's going to happen with Otani and Trout from a baseball perspective. Are they going to move to a big market? 
And so when those moments are happening, again, these are the moments that you can capitalize on as a seller at eBay. When those guys are in the news, people are going to be looking for them. Facts. So for collectible card games and non-sports trading cards, you see Pokemon is really the biggest So informative. Uh, Magic the Gathering was one of the biggest sellers on eBay, but Pokemon has really captured the eyes of not only the collector and the investor, but it's also got a resurgence amongst kids playing this it. This was crazy. Which is great. So and this is what we Pokemon love finally they serve multiple outshine places. Magic the Gathering. That's you absolutely can go nuts. You back and find the vintage ones and do, you know, have those be part of your collection. Look at those as potentially investment pieces. Or you can jump on the current trends and find what the kids are playing and know that those kids someday will look back on what they're doing right now with the same nostalgia that we're looking back 20 years on the things that drove us when we were young. And that nostalgia wheel is so important for collectibles. And it's something yes, that you can take advantage wheel. of, especially with collectible card games. Love that. Uh, just sharing, you also see Yu-Gi-Oh! as a significant third player. Yu-Gi-Oh! has got tremendous growth. It's getting more and more popular out there. And then the others, those are just various card games that are coming out. But it's important to keep your eyes open for new business opportunities. As these games are launched, sometimes on Kickstarter or sometimes just through hobby game stores, um, that scarcity early on for these games can be can be there, right? And so there's an opportunity to get some of that inventory and get it up on your platform, get it up on your store, and have people uh, have people go after it. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about top searches and top selling items. Um, one of the things that I keep going back to is that you often see a correlation between what's happening in real time from a cultural perspective and what's selling on on eBay. The other thing that's super important about um, how to juice your listings a little bit, and we'll get into that in a moment, juice is recognizing listings, that yes. specificity is super important as well. So when you look at some of these, when you look at some of these uh, yes. top search keywords, how do we first one Pokemon super search. broad, second one PSA tent super broad, but eventually they start moving into very specific kind of. Uh, that's what uh, I really wanted to learn was how so to Franco, Michael Jordan, maximize views uh, on my Jamar, listing. So, you know, Justin Herbert, these are, these are the cards that this. people are specifically Super looking helpful. for the player. And then they're filtering down to the specific card that they're looking for. You also see Tom Brady rookie card. That's getting a little bit more specific. And so it's hypercritical that as you're filling out your listings, you're adding as much detail as possible. So no matter how somebody searches, there's a good chance that your inventory is being pulled into this. Um, top searches, again, at different times in the year, will change and, and, and move around. So John Morant, Kobe Bryant, those are going to happen during peak basketball seasonality. And when you see, you know, baseball cards, that's probably sometime during spring training when people are starting their search from a relatively broad perspective and then using the tools that eBay provides to filter their searches down to what they're looking for, whether it be by price point or by brand or by, by player, any of those things. So here's kind of an obvious chart for people, players in demand. Um, one of the things that you're going to notice that these are all either superstars or emerging superstars. Michael Jordan, greatest basketball Joe player of all time. Burrow. Yes. I Some might Joe debate Burrow. it. I wouldn't. I put him up there as the best. Michael Jordan continues <laughs> no to be for heavily Bob sought means. after. Love people it. are looking for cards that haven't been graded or they're looking for cards that are graded. But then you see everyone else in here, and some of them might be young players who have entered the league. And people are seeing this as an opportunity to get those cards and get them now before they That's go up in value. Reading, by the way. You have to make the decision. What's the best What's the best move for you if you're sitting on some of these cards? Do you want to move it now? Do you want to move it later? It doesn't matter. It's up to what you think is the right thing to do, but the demand will always be there. In football, one of the things that you probably have all noticed, it's all quarterbacks. Uh, quarterbacks tend to be the most exciting players on the field and get the most press and they get the uh, they get the um, most amount of time on ESPN and on SportsCenter and all that good stuff. So they become well known. But that doesn't mean you can't sell running backs, you can't sell wide receivers. It doesn't mean that there's not demand for defensive ends even. But we do see consistently that the quarterbacks are the ones that are drawing the most attention from a football perspective. And then again, soccer, tennis, some of the tertiary sports, hockey. You know, these are all sports that all follow the exact same sort of rhythm, which is players that are setting the news cycles on fire, players that are doing things that are extraordinary. Those are the players that people are going to seek, and they're going to seek the rarest cards that they can find. Um, those are the cards that you want to try to take advantage of. But that doesn't mean that you can't sell low-end either. 
one of the facts that I love to share with people is almost, uh, we sell millions of cards under $20 millions and we've developed a shipping model to specifically help with that which i'll get to in a second as well but the reason why we developed a shipping model to help with 20 dollars and under cards is we sell so many of them and we needed people to have an efficient way of moving through so many of those cards now as you move up out of the low end, lower end cards you start moving into mid-range and high-end cards and for these what we put in place now is authenticity guarantee we are running it through ag, AG. And what AG yes. is going to do is make sure that the customer who purchased this card is going to get exactly what they purchased. The whole point of this is just to make sure that the condition is fair. From a graded perspective, it's super easy. I've used AG the right card. a couple Most times now. Most of the graded now. cards are a single unique item, but there are it times where people so might have two for, like, of the same PSA 10s. Or the older high-end Pokemon the cards that I buy, it makes different. it so we'll that. We'll make sure that, peace of mind. Um, the, the customer is getting the you card know? that they thought they were going to get. But from a raw perspective, from an check ungraded that listing, perspective, check the AG details. gives us the opportunity to double check the listing and make sure yes, the card sir, is Bob, in the condition the that the seller said it is. We're going to talk a little bit about what that means for sellers. But the important thing is, is we're trying to decrease snads. We're trying to decrease unhappy buying experiences. We're trying to make sure that it's uh, a quicker system for the buyer and develop that confidence for the buyers that they can buy from you on eBay when they move into these higher end cards. We sell a lot of $250 plus cards and it's a business that is incredibly healthy for us. And we also want to make sure that when a seller has sold a card, at any value, but specifically once it's over the $250 uh, point, you feel very, very comfortable that that transaction is going to stay and it's going to be something you can count on because we're gonna run it through this system. And then once it's gone through AG, you're welcome to have a no return policy because if it gets through AG, it should stay It should stay in the uh, buyer's hands at that point. Yeah, first. Okay, so these are some fun. These are some fun slides. Uh, just looking at some of the big bombs that we sold mil. on Holy eBay crap. since 2021, you can see the uh, the Tom Brady rookie card. That was a lot of fun, what? super exciting. But you can see we can sell five hundred thousand dollar cards, eight hundred thousand dollar cards. We can sell one hundred thousand dollar cards. If you have inventory that's in this rare air, trust the AG process. It's almost all of these cards, because I don't think we'll see a raw card like this at this kind of price points, unless you happen to find like an old T206 on this Wagner or something, or something of that kind of yeah, scale. But for the most part, these are going to be graded AG. cards. Those transactions need to go off without a hitch for both the buyer and the seller. And you can trust AG to help that happen. That. Some more big cards on the CCG side of the business. Again, Heck six yeah. figure cards, all successfully transacted. Uh, we will help you with these cards. Pikachu if you ever have something that's in this kind of rare air, um, you know we what, will Bob, make sure maybe that we one will day. do our best to make sure that uh, the buyers that are maybe trying to buy one day I'll buy a Pikachu Illustrator. And are uh, safe and, and the transaction will go off well. I could see myself buying a Black Lotus. Okay, so let's a talk a little bit about how to accelerate your success. So some of the things that we've already talked about are going to keep coming up. Uh, first of all, multiple photos we're selling collectibles here right, right. We this are selling, part was super we are helpful selling things that people want to understand the details of so whether you're talking trading cards or any collectible Juice what you want to do is put multiple photos in there uh for specifically for ungraded cards the more you can show if you think the card is worth significant value and by significant value i would say anything over 50 dollars. scanners are life changing customers are going to want to zoom in use that ebay oh, zoom technology go look oh, at the thanks. corners look at the surface make sure there's not a print line in there they're going to want to do that and the more that you can facilitate that the better off this is going to be for everybody so always take multiple photos with graded cards it's not quite as critical but one of the things that i would ask everyone to do is sometimes those graded cards get a little scratch in it Sometimes Try they get Bob. a little chip in the corner. Show that. Try Be Bob. honest. And this is what I, the next point here of conditioning, condition fairly. Two stories here. One, talking about graded for a second. If something has happened to that case, let the buyer know. Uh, it is frustrating to have what they thought was a pristine graded case uh, show up and maybe there's a little chip in the corner. Uh, so anything that you can share is helpful in this situation. For ungraded cards or raw cards, being conservative in the way you approach the card, I think is in your best interest. From a buyer's perspective, they're seeing the pictures that you've taken, the multiple pictures that you have. 
and they're seeing a card that they'll see that you're being conservative. They're seeing a card in wonderful condition. Um, so, you know, even though you want to get the most out of it that you can get by saying it's, it's pristine, it's near mint, you know, make sure you're being totally honest and possibly being conservative in the way you approach it. Because when that card gets oh, to somebody, possible. if there's a surface scratch that you didn't explain, if there's a small ding in a corner, they're going to be frustrated. And this is just a way of improving that seller-buyer relationship. Sellers condition fairly. It's in your best interest. Listing higher priced cards. So we just showed you some of those six-figure bombs that we sold. Uh, eBay is incredibly strong in the $500 to $10,000 range. We're going to continue to work on trust initiatives here at eBay to make sure that there's less and less reasons for somebody to be able to back out of a, a purchase or um, do what's called an unpaid item, bid it up someplace and then not pay. We need to fix all those things. We need to fix these trust issues, but we've got the eyeballs. We've got the people looking for them. The last thing, offering discounts. So what I think is a great thing for sellers to do is put a discount at the store level. Some super secret stuff for you. Our best buyers are buying multiple cards per week. They are buying, they're not just coming in and doing a one and done. When they shop, they shop for multiples. And you can put something on your store that says, you know, buy three, get, get the fourth free. Buy three, get 20% off. Buy whatever you want to do. There's tons of different rules that you can put onto your storefront to incent people to stay in your store and shop for those cards that, that they're looking for. Um, I think when people change their visit to looking at a store, for me at least, that's when I start doing impulsive things because I find out that you have this card. And as I'm searching through your inventory and you're running a take 20% off when you buy three or more, whatever the deal is that you, you might be doing, that's where I start adding impulsive purchases. But more important than that is our best buyers. Impulsive they purchases. Buy I'm times. your girl. They do I am your every girl. Other, they do it every week, but within a week, they're buying Mood purchases, impulsive purchases. Those are my four biggest guides for you to really drive additional business. All right, so what we've accomplished. We're very, very proud of what we've done this year. Uh, we've launched quite a few things. So just going over these quickly, eBay standard envelope. I was talking about that for under $20. This is a great service that enables you to ship with tracking so that you can hit that uh, top rated seller uh, status without having to ship cheap cards with just a stamp. Um, recommend it for everyone who is selling cards under that $20 mark. Uh, trading card specific trust policies. So we changed the way that you can do bid retractions as an example. Um, now you have to go to the seller if you try to retract your bid and you made an honest mistake We ask you to go to the seller and say I made a mistake. Can I have my bid retract? But we're removing the ability to just pull it out after putting the bid in We're gonna keep doing trading card specific trust policies because they work for the entire collectible organization These are gonna include working on buyer vetting the excuses working on, on card going items, lower the best. Making sure we need that some bad of those. buyers are getting pushed off the site or having a really hard time causing any headaches for the, for our sellers. We have image scan and quick listing for CCG cards. And what we're going to be working, I'm gonna be talking about this in a little bit, is bringing this to sports trading cards. If you haven't done this, it's great to try. You can literally scan a card, have all the data about the card populated, and then you take a couple photos, the listing is up. We've also added collection tools onto uh, my eBay. Within my eBay on your phone, you can find your collection manager. If you're into trading cards, if you've bought a card on eBay, it's in there. You just need to accept it in. Um, it's a great tool to keep track of the value that you have with of, of cards that you've bought on eBay. We want to expand this. We want to continue making this better and iterate on it and make it a more powerful tool. But it's out there. It was a big win for us to get this out. And uh, we look forward to making it even hardier and more robust for you. Price guide. So uh, for anybody who's in this business and anyone who's ever been to a trade, a card trading show, so people are using their phone to find out what the price is that a card is worth. Sometimes price guide is super valuable for us. It helps you list the card at a more appropriate price point, but also it lets you know how to shop. So our buyers are looking for the best deal they can get because they know where the comps are. So if you list something, this goes back to accelerate your success as well. If you list uh, something 20%, 30% over the market, List it, but it's not going to sell. If you list it competitively, then it comes down to your, your seller ratings. It comes down to the photos that you're leaving. It puts you right into the middle of the hunt for those items. And then authenticity guarantee, which we've already talked about quite a bit. 
But I think that this is such an important part of our business now, making sure that people understand that the card they get is the card they wanted and that there's no issue with counterfeits or anything like that. All right, and then the eBay vault. You guys have heard about it. Jamie spoke about it. Yes, eBay um, vault. The eBay vault Dude, is, like is a spectacular new way of doing business. As a seller, How there are cool. no selling fees. So as cards move into the vault, if you own a card and you put it into the vault and then you want to sell it, there is no selling. one card in the vault fulfillment occurs. right now. You don't even have to think about it. So if you're, if you're more of a collector, if collectors are buying from you and sending it to the vault, it's going to sit there as long as they want it to sit there until they want to sell it. The vault is safe. The vault is secure. The vault is climate controlled. Security is top notch. I'll have a little bit more on this and explain some of the things that are coming with the vault in a moment. Full white suits. So what's that? I don't know. That's how I picture it. Okay, eBay standard envelope. It's been a huge success for us. Uh, the people that are using it really like it. It gives that extra element of tracking. It's not perfect tracking for anyone who's used it. It's not perfect tracking. It's not like what you get with FedEx, but there's enough notification there. Bob is like just the so to part, the point. People are seeing so that good. the card is on its way and when it's going to be delivered. We want to integrate this further into our shipping labels Chat program going to make off. it easier Best for people speaker. to use. And some of you so that are far. selling 10, 20, 50, 100 cards a day in this up. price point, I want you to be able to print all of those out in one time. So we need to do some further uh, integration there to make it a lot easier to use. We're also investigating where it can be used with other categories. So stamps, postcards, small pieces of art. I would love a world where we can help with comic books, for instance. So there's a lot of work to, for us to do and see what else we can and where we can expand this. Okay, Interscan a quick listing. I talked about this earlier. We need to get this sports trading card world. Uh, we need to get ad collection from Scan and we need to get price guide on Scan. So if you can imagine, right now there's kind of three different tools out there and I wanna merge them all together. So when you're using your phone, you can scan a card. If you're at a shop, you can scan it. You can see that there's a better deal on eBay and buy it. If you are wanting to list a card, you can scan it while you're sitting there watching a television show, watching a sports event, list it. And if you've bought it, you can add it to your collection super easy. Get the price guidance improved. Just improve the entire suite of tools. Yes. Okay, the vault. Give it so, to us easy. Talk a little bit about this. The first one is the most important one that we're talking about, which is self-submission. We're looking forward to having this launched. This is going to enable you as a seller to take some of your inventory and put it into the vault. Again, talked about this a minute ago, zero seller fees. Get it in there, have it start being part of the vault transaction process. Let people find that card and get that card into their collection where they can then sell it at a zero seller fee. Uh, we're talking about fractionalization. This is kind of a neat idea, but you can imagine that Tom Brady rookie card at $2.3 million that we sold. If if we sell that on eBay, the buyer may decide to put it into the vault. And then what we would love to, for them to think about is maybe selling off 49% of it, 51% of it, sell off fractionalized shares and bring that price down to a, a different level for people. Tokenization and NFT support of vaulted goods. So, you know, we have, we have had some successful NFTs at this point. Hopefully people have seen these. NFTs, I think, are a super important part of the business and how they relate to sports trading cards. And I can see a world where we start supporting your particular card that's in the vault with an NFT. More on that to come. Direct trading. So imagine this. If price guide is, if price guide is top notch and you have card X that's worth $1,000 and someone else has card Y which is worth $1,000, trade them. Not even a transaction that, that it's occurring. We need to connect the social aspect of trading. And anyone who's been involved with any trading cards, either collectible card games or sports trading cards, you know that the social component of it is incredibly important. Direct trading, card for card. This could be a super fun unlock for sellers. If you, if, again, as a seller, you may want to take all of your John Morant inventory and move it into a different player. Those are the kind of things that you could do if your inventory was in the vault. And then, of course, we want to expand to new categories within collectibles. Who knows what's going to come next? There are so many things that would benefit from vault-like capabilities and collectibles. But Funko, um, ungar uh, ungraded cards, vinyl, stamps, coins, there's a lot of things that can move in there and make perfect sense as well. All right, so key takeaways, everyone. We are going to remain the largest online marketplace for trading cards. There's a lot of competition Sir, coming are. in, a lot of people who want a piece of that pie. We are going to fight tooth and nail for Again, you sellers to make sure that we remain the largest session. I attended a couple Innovation will today. continue to drive your business forward. 
We are listening I'll to be sellers. Back tomorrow. We are hearing what you mean. And I'll be in we are person. listening to how the market Friday, changes are so impacting you. And we're making changes as fast as we can. Also, need your and shirt trust in the crop top, buyers, You are the cornerstone of our success. I more than, well, all of eBay knows this. You're the ones that fuel us. And you're the ones that we need to continue to work towards. Or work with, excuse me. Um, I love 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 hearing from you guys so you know come to the shows that i'm at talk to me let me know what we can do what we can do better but just know that all the love for you you are the cornerstone thank you so much for your time love you bob love you all of you being here and i look forward to hearing from you some more thank you so much bye bob